All right, I am back with another video, and today we are doing, well, it's not actually a build request, this is just a build that I came up with and really felt like showing off, and when I used it in practice, oh boy is it fun. So, judging by the title, you might be able to guess what this is, but I'm going for a Bard Storm Sorcerer mix today, because I don't know, I just felt like it would be really, really interesting to mix that kind of, like, aspect of being a bard and using your voice and playing instruments with the idea of thunder and lightning. So then I thought... What if we go with, like, a metal band, like, goth singer, like, you know, like, screamo type theme? So what I've got here is basically kind of like a, is basically just a character that kind of, like, went to a bardic college, but has kind of found a way to, like, kind of put thunder magic and the power of, like, that reverberation into uh, their kind of playing, and as such has created this, like, really echoey, grungy sound that sounds a bit closer to, to like, what metal music would be today. And maybe you could even do, like, a full build around that idea of, like, a wandering metal band. I think that could be really cool, but I've just gone with what I would consider, I guess, the vocalist and maybe the lead guitarist today. But I figured I'd just kind of, as soon as that kind of, like, um... I guess law justification, not really law, but like theme came into mind of like a metal singer that uses like fire and lightning. I just, uh, not fire and lightning, thunder and lightning, my apologies. I absolutely had to do it. And this might just be one of my favorite builds I've made, just purely mechanically, because the stuff you can do with this is super, super fun. So let's get into the build. First off, we're going to be starting off as a bard simply because I want the weapon proficiencies. But if you don't care about using a longsword, which I am in this case, uh, start with sorcerer because that would give you constitution saving proficiency. And with storm sorcery, you gain the ability to fly at level one, which would be super useful. But I'm starting off as bard today. So with bard, you're going to get a bunch of things. Obviously, we're taking the vicious mockery friends combo. Vicious mockery being one of our better damaging cantrips uh, for a build like this and friends as being the best cantrip in the game i think i've just come to that conclusion that my, in my opinion friends if you're not playing a specific eldritch blast warlock build friends is the best general use cantrip that you can get as for your spells obviously we're going with thunder wave it is the whole point of this build and the fact that we can get it at level one is actually really nice but i've also gone with speak with animals just because it's a fun role play and dialogue spell as well as long strider for another utility spell and then i've gone with dissonant whispers again if we're a vocalist we might as well use our voice to do some damage same vein as vicious mockery dealing some psychic damage of course our starting instrument is the lute as close as we can get to kind of a guitar but you can pick whatever you like here if you want and then next up we have our stats now this build is a little bit starved for feats so i did want to kind of optimize our stats here as such i've gone for a 17 in charisma and then we're going to use ethel's boon to bump that up to an 18 giving us an 18 really early on it's i would say this is absolutely the best route you could go with now as for our other stats obviously we have dexterity at 16 uh, this is going to be important for our weapons and constitution of 14 because it's a nice middle ground on the HP, but we can bump this up later. And as for our skill proficiencies, I've gone with deception and intimidation along with stealth. Uh, you, we, I've gone with the entertainer background to gain performance and acrobatics, and I'm a human, so it's automatically picked persuasion. Unfortunately, it seems like patch 5 or maybe the improved UI mod that I'm using has bugged the human uh, feet. Uh, not the human feet, uh, the human proficiency selection again, but luckily it landed on a good one anyway, so I'm not too worried. But you basically want to just get all your speech skills here, plus, you know, um, acrobatics and performance, and then you can pick whatever you like for the last one, but I like stealth. I think it just gives you a bit more um, options as you play through the game. Right, I'll quickly jump over to Sorcerer for a level, I think, just because I feel like that is going to give you a little bit more of your base kit, including that ability to fly in, amongst other things, so I think it would be nice to pick it up early. For our cantrips, obviously we're going to be grabbing Shocking Grasp. Uh, it's a good close-range lightning attack that we can use until we get our weapon, but I'm also going to be grabbing Ray of Frost as well, because this will also work well with our playstyle. Acid Splash and uh, Firebolt as well, maybe? Uh, probably Bone Chill. As for our spells, I'm going to keep Chromatic Orb, because that can give us Thunder and Lightning in a single spell early on, which is quite nice. Uh, and then I think but we're also going to need to grab Mage Armor as well. We are wearing clothing with this build, and Mage Armor is going to help with that. And obviously our subclass is Storm. Sorcery, giving us Tempestuous Magic. After we cast a leveled spell, we can fly as a bonus action without receiving opportunity attacks, allowing us to reposition ourselves, either getting further back 
to, uh, you know, be a blaster caster or further in to be a sword user because this is a Gish build, which is some of my favorites to make. Now, what I'm going to show off very quickly is an optional one level multi-class dip that you can take if you want, but I would recommend swapping out uh, once you reach a certain level or get some certain pieces of equipment. So, I'm going to suggest that if you want a little bit extra in the early game, go with Tempest Cleric for a level. Because what that's going to give you is it's going to give you um, Wrath of the Storm, allowing you to use your reaction to deal lightning or thunder damage, which is good. But also you can, you, you can grab a prepared spell and that can be Create or Destroy water and create or destroy water will allow you to create a water surface and dash your enemies in water making them vulnerable to cold and lightning damage meaning that you can get those double damage attacks really early on uh, i will be showing off a piece of equipment that you can also get early that would negate the need to take this but you do get some extra features from going tempest cleric uh but i'm it's not going to be part of the final build i'm just showing it off as an early game option that you can respec out of later once we get other ways to grab prepare uh, create or destroy water so i'm just pointing it out that maybe around the level two to three mark you could pick this up but i'm going to go back to our main uh class for now that being bard because i kind of want the bard features first now that we've got some basic first level stuff from sorcerer so with level two of bard you know the drill jack of all trades song of rest for two really important bard features that you get early on that are going to really help you in your party now, as for our spells, we do just get an extra one at this point, and I am only going to grab Featherfall because it is a pretty good, uh, you know, uh, utility option. But if you wanted something that's on theme, you could grab Heroism. You being kind of a lead singer, always at the front, would make sense, but it requires your concentration, and we kind of want to use that for other things. So Featherfall being a nice utility spell works out pretty well here. Next up. At Bard level 3, we're going to get to pick our subclass, and you can choose any of them. It's not essential to this build. Uh, College of Law would obviously make sense if you were a vocalist in a band, you know, being able to use your voice a bit more. College of Valor for support supporting your bandmates would also work. But I want College of Swords, because at the end of the day, I do like College of Swords as much as I trash on it because it is good it's just too good not to pick most of the time and of course i wanted to kind of build my what i think would be the most fun build here so we are going with swords this is going to get us a fighting style now you could go with two weapon fighting here as i did test a variant of this build that does use dual wielding and it could work except for the fact that it's actually bugged at the moment there's an odd bug going on and i'll explain that later but you could take this and then grab dual wielder later if you want but i'm not going to be showing that off in this video again because it's bugged but i will have a little thing in the description of this video saying hey if this bug gets fixed you could try this so i'll take it for now since we don't need dueling either since we're not going to be using a shield but if you decided you did want to use a shield then dueling is right there as well so entirely up to you as for our spells, obviously we're taking Shatter. This is a bit of a an extra way of dealing thunder damage, and it's on theme for the build, so I super, super want it. Next up at bar level 4, we are going to be grabbing our first feat, and that means we're going to take an ability score improvement, a bump up our charisma to a total of 20 with Ethel's Boon, meaning that by total level 5, we have a maxed out stat, which is awesome. We do get another cantrip at this level, and I'm just going to grab Mage Hand because it has uses. And as for our next spell, I'm going to be grabbing Phantasmal Force. Because this spell does uh, damage uh, that is the same as the last damage type you did, if you cast this and then hit your enemy with a bit of thunder damage or lightning damage, you can kind of frame it as they're still reverberating from the initial shock, or are still being shocked from lightning. So you can kind of flavor this. I like it, but feel free to take whatever you like. And next up at Bard level 5, we are going to be getting our Font of Inspiration, meaning we now recover Bardic Inspiration on a short rest, and our Bardic Inspiration has increased to a D8, making it that much more powerful. We do also get level 3 spells at this level, and I'm going to recommend Glyph of Warding, allowing us to set a Thunder or Lightning Glyph on the ground that will blow up, set, set up the stage, and then blow them away with your music. I just thought of that on the spot. Go me. And finally, at Bard level 6, we're going to be getting extra attack. We are now a full melee fighter. A couple of levels later than usual, yes, but again, if you don't if you don't want that Storm Sorcerer level early on, you can get this a tad earlier. And again, feel free to take these levels in any order you like. It really doesn't matter. 
Uh, but I just kind of wanted to show off Bard first, as I think I would lean more into the Bard stuff first, because we do still get Thunder Spells and all the like, so I feel like you would be pretty safe going Bard all the way first, and then Sorcerer after. But it's entirely up to you. We do get another spell at this level, and there's nothing I really want to take here, so it's entirely a pick-your-favorite situation, and my favorite is Enhance Ability, because it has so many different uses. And we are done with Bard now, so let's hop back over to Sorcerer for the rest of our levels. With level 2 of Sorcerer, we're going to be getting our Meta Magic, as well as an extra spell, and of course I'm going with Shield because it is the most powerful utility spell. Yes, Witch Bolt is right there. No, I don't care. Right, class passives. We have Twinned Spell. Obviously, we want this for our Meta Magic option. This is going to allow us to twin things like Haste or Lightning Bolt or whatever. Uh, super, super cool. I really, really like this spell, and I think it's something you want to you want to grab 100%. And I, my next option is going to be a bit of a strange one. I want Careful Spell. Usually, I go for Distant Spell for sniping, but Careful Spell makes more sense, as we are going to be making big AoE attacks, so giving our allies a bit of a better chance if they're nearby is pretty good. As for Sorcerer level 3, we're going to get some more meta magic options and absolutely quicken spell. The best option by far. And we also do get to have get access to level 2 spells at this point. And it's entirely up to you what you want to pick, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to be going with Mirror Image. Just because I like the idea that you strum a beat so hard that your opponent's ears start ringing and they get a headache and they start seeing double, so you're harder to hit. That's my justification for it, it's just a really useful utility spell. Next up at Storm Sorcerer level 4, we are going to be taking our second feat, and at this point is kind of where I'd say, hey, if you want Dual Wielder, grab it, or I would actually say probably grab it as your first feat, and then bump up Charisma now, but I'll go over why we're not doing that later, like I said. However, for now, let's grab an Ability Score Improvement, and you do have some options. You could go for Dexterity to 18 to get a bit more of your weapon attacks, but I'm personally going to be grabbing more Constitution, as I found that's going to be better for our Concentration Saving Throws, and for our ace, and for our health overall, 16 is enough for this strategy, as you'll see when I show off the combat testing. We do get another cantrip at this level, and it is a take your pick your favorite situation, so I'll go with that one. Uh, as for our spells, we do get another one, and I'm just going to grab Misty Step, because, again, I want it, and I refuse to take Witch Bolt, but something like Magic Missile or any of the others could also work, but having Misty Step and Mirror Image is quite a nice little combo. Next up at Storm Sorcerer level 5, here we are at the big time. Finally, we get Lightning Bolt, our big massive lightning damage move. One of the best, one of the best offensive spells in the game, next to things like Fireball, so you absolutely want to grab this. And now at level 6 of Sorcerer is where we're gonna get a ton of cool stuff. Namely, we now have access to Thunder Wave double time over, so if you wanted to respect that off a of barge, you could. We also get Create or Destroy Water now, which is awesome, Gust of Wind, which is on theme, Sleet Storm, which is also on theme, and also Cool Lightning for another version of our lightning attacks. But we also get things like Heart of the Storm, allowing us to do an extra bit of lightning and thunder damage to our enemies, and we also gain resistance to those two damage types as well, which is great. We get a ton of stuff at this level, and it's absolutely worth going towards, but if you don't care as much about all this stuff, you could just stick with that one level of Tempest Cleric to give your melee attacks a bit more a uh, bit more uh, viability because of those reaction uh, retaliation attacks you get with Wrath of the Storm. And we also, but I, we are going to get another level 3 spell from this, and of course, we're going with haste. We start playing in double time. This is going to allow us to, with twin haste, keep us and an ally super, super speedy, making both our blaster cast stuff and our melee fighter stuff way more powerful. So definitely want to pick this up. And that is the build. And can I just say, I was really happy to find an outfit that I felt worked uh, with this kind of look. It kind of looks like that kind of black leather jacket look. It, they, they look like they'd be in a metal band. I think it looks quite nice. But let's get into the equipment, if I can just pull that up. Perfect. So, let's have a look at the equipment, and there is a lot of different options to go over here, so let's get talking about it. So, let's get started with what we already have. We have the Diadem of Arcane Synergy. We're going to be inflicting a lot of status conditions from this, but with this build, so getting an extra buff to our weapon attacks when we do so is super good, because if you don't know, Arcane Synergy will 
Arcane Synergy will, thank you, uh, allow our weapon attacks to deal additional damage equal to our spellcasting ability modifier, which is going to be high if you have it maxed out, so definitely worth grabbing this. You can get it fairly early, and it's going to be a big buff to your playstyle. Next up is the Thunderskin Cloak. When a creature with reverberation deals damage to the wearer, the creature makes a constitution saving throw or becomes dazed. Yes, we're using reverberation with this build. Why the hell wouldn't we? It is the most on-theme thing, on theme thing we could do. With that as well, dazed is super powerful. The wearer has the person who has dazed has disadvantaged on wisdom saving throws, cannot take reactions, and loses the de dexterity bonus from their armor class really powerful extra condition to inflict and it's not the only way you'd be able to do it as you'll see in a minute next up we have the wave mother's robe this is an act three robe that gives you resistance to fire and cold damage if you start the turn on the water surface which we can do you heal a little bit of your hp and it does also give you the ability to cast create or destroy water once per short rest this is one of the pieces of equipment that could be used in exchange of that tempest cleric level and we also get a buff to our armor class as well so yeah you can grab create or destroy water that way you only should need it once per short rest as most combat encounters especially in the late game are going to be having you sh having you short resting between each combat anyway so it's perfectly fine just to go for that initial setup round once per short rest but of course uh we have other options for that as well as i'll get to in a minute but again this is an act three option so if you want a decent option in the meantime go with the protecty spark wall you gain a plus one bonus to spell save dc and if the wearer and the wearer has a plus one bonus to their armor class and saving throws as long as they have lightning charges this build also gets lightning charges so you can make use of this but let's swap back to our main outfit for now Next up, the obvious choice is the Glove of Belligerent Skies. When the rarer deals thunder, lightning, or radiant damage, inflict two turns of reverberation onto the target. Now, obviously, we're doing a ton of thunder and lightning damage with this build, but let me just quickly go over what ray reverberation does for those of you that don't know. The affected entity has a negative one penalty to strength, dexterity, and constitution saving throws per remaining turn. When the entity has five or more turns of reverberation, it takes one to four thunder damage and possibly falls prone. The condition is removed afterwards basically all this means is that you can with some other equipment that we're going to be using you can apply this status effect over and over and over again constantly keeping your enemies prone and dealing that extra damage because the stacks will kind of they'll you kind of get that initial burst once you hit enough stacks and then you can start the combo over again definitely a strategy this is a strategy that i've used in a lot of my builds and here it is so on theme that i couldn't ignore it and one of the other cornerstone pieces of this build is the water sparkers. When the wearer stands on a water surface during combat, it becomes electrified. If the wearer starts their turn on an electrified surface, which you make automatically, you immediately gain three lightning charges. Now, what lightning charges do is lightning courses through you. You have a plus one bonus to attack rolls and deal an additional one lightning damage. Awesome. When you gain five charges, they are consumed the next time you deal damage, and you do an additional one to eight lightning damage, and you lose one charge per turn. So basically the idea with this build is you set up a watery surface using create water, then step on it, and just go absolutely ham, getting lightning charges, getting reverberation, you are a lightning and thunder god, or goddess, I guess in this case. So with this kind of, and plus you're able to daze your enemies as well if they attack you back, you're getting extra damage on your weapon attacks of Arcane Synergy because this will trigger all mining charges and reverberation. You've got the absolute works with this build. But we're not even done yet because we haven't got to the accessories. Now you have some options for your accessories here as I'll show off in a minute, but let me go over the three that I've chosen. First up is the Spine Shudder Amulet. When the wearer deals damage with a ranged spell attack, inflicts two reverberation. Meaning that if you just cast a thunder or lightning ranged spell, you're getting double stacks of reverberation between the gloves and the necklace. Meaning that if you're a blaster caster, you're going to be getting this status effect off a lot. And next up is the Sparks Wall. This one is essential because it means you cannot be electrocuted. Normally, when you stand on electrified water surfaces, you become electrocuted. Whoops, that was the wrong button. I've used a short rest. Never mind. An electrocuted means you take 1d4 lightning damage at the start of each turn. Now, that will apply to our enemies, but as long as we're wearing this ring, that won't apply to us. And it also does give you resistance to lightning damage, which again, we would be getting ahead of time uh, before we get it naturally from our Storm Sorcerer levels anyway, so it's nice to have. 
And then finally we have the Ring of Spiteful Thunder. When the wearer deals thunder damage to a reverberating creature, it becomes dazed unless it succeeds a constitution saving throw. So this is a more active way to get the dazed condition if you wanted to go that route. But I find that usually the cloak works just fine, so you could sub this one out. But let's get into the other options for accessories if you would like to use them. An obvious choice would be the Necklace of Elemental Augmentation, meaning that we, when we deal lightning or thunder damage, we add our spell casting modifier to the damage dealt. This would be a big buff if you care less about reverberation and just want that raw damage. Pick this up and equip this instead. And your other options for rings could be the Ring of Elemental Infusion. When you deal, in our case, lightning or thunder damage using a spell or, can or cantrip, that element infuses your weapon, allowing your next attack to, to do an additional 1d4 of that damage type. It would make your melee combat a bit more viable, but it's up to you. We also have the Ring of Arcane Synergy. When you deal damage with a cantrip, you gain Arcane Synergy for two turns. If you still want Arcane Synergy, but you don't want your head slot taken up, this is an alternate way of doing it. And finally, we have the Ring of Absolute Force. If the wearer bears the Absolute's brand, they deal in one additional thunder damage with thunder damage spells and attacks, and it gives you an extra usage of Thunder Wave. So, you have a lot of options here. Please ignore this ring. Uh, that's for, that's mods. That helps me make these videos. Now, let's get into the weapon stuff, because this is going to be quite important. So, first up, we have Fowler Aluv. This is, a, this is the most on-theme weapon we could possibly get. It is literally a singing sword. It makes sense for a bard to have, especially one that we've kind of made here that focuses on thunder damage. Because what you can do with Falor Aluv is you can use Falor Aluv Melody and specifically the Shriek variant. The sword shrieks. All enemies within a 6 meter range have a 1d4 penalty to Charisma, Wisdom, and Intelligence saving throws. Affected creatures also receive an extra 1 to 4 thunder damage when they are attacked. Meaning that it's another way to do thunder damage. And you can buff it with the Drake Throat Glaive, which will let you cast Draconic Elemental Weapon. I should be able to show this off if I've set the video up correctly. Yep. I'm going to go for Thunder, because that's kind of what I'm focusing on. And boom, there we go. As you can see, our Tempestuous Magic also kicked in, so we have that Lightning Aura, which is cool. But here, now you can see it is now a plus two weapon, dealing an extra 1d4 Thunder damage, and that's without the buff from the sword itself, using its Shriek ability. So with this, you'll have a really powerful sword. Now, I'll quickly talk about the dual wielding aspect, because... If you remember, I said, oh, you could also dual wield this build. You see, Fowler Aluv is a finesse longsword. If you picked up dual wielder, you could also grab, and I'll have the infographic on screen now, Lorinthian's Wrath to have a second finesse longsword. And the thing is, is if you, you can actually twin cast, using your meta magic, the Drake Throat Glaive's buff. A uh, shout out to the person who commented this that told me that this was possible. All credit goes to you. Please comment below because I've forgotten your name and I can't find your comment again. So let me know if that was you. Um, but basically what you could do is you could twin cast um, Elemental Weapon on both Fowler Aluv and Lorinthian's Wrath and have them both be buffed with Thunder or Lightning damage, which would be super cool for this build. However, I don't know what was going on, but at the moment, Lorinthian's Wrath specifically seems to be bugged. If you drop the weapon on the floor, it cannot be targeted and therefore cannot even be picked up again. Unless you're on controller and use the scan item thing you get by holding down uh, the A button. I don't know why it does this. Lorinthian's Wrath was the only item I could find that does this. It must be something to do with like how it's obtained in game. Maybe it doesn't have the fl proper flags for if it's on the floor because it's obtained from like a container container or something. So unfortunately, I can't endorse that playstyle yet because it is bugged. However, once that bug is fixed and I will be reporting it to Larian, I would absolutely recommend subbing out that buff to our constitution for dual wielder, going with dual wielding swords because it looks awesome as hell. I mean, you can still do it, you're just not going to get that buff on the offhand, but I'd much rather do it if we could get a buff on Eva. And I guess you technically could if you wanted to go for an ice damage buff from the Flail of Ages, but for now, we could just focus on the single sword variant. Now, another option in the early game, if you want to get Create or Destroy Water, but you don't want that Tempest Cleric level, you can grab the Rain Dancer. This can be obtained super, super early. It is a Quarter Staff, which you could use if you started Sorcerer. And it will allow you to cast Create Water 
once per short rest. So you could still do it that way. Although I personally still recommend going the Tempest Cleric level personally. But if you don't want to do that, Rain Dancer is here. So that is another option. And I'll get quickly into our final weapon. I went with the Hellfire Engine Crossbow, but this is mainly just for flavor. Because it would let us cast Lightning Arrow. We're not actually going to use this to shoot things. We just want Lightning Arrow. Which means we can have another big damage lightning attack that we can use once per long rest, as well as the ability to use the reposition malfactor to pull enemies closer to you. And yes, for the record, you can use this even if you're not. You can use these even if, if you're not proficient. You just don't get the uh, extra attacks that you see here, and you don't get that extra damage. But we're mainly here for the spell and this thing here. You can see it gets divided by two. So there you go. That is the options you have there. Again, you can swap that out for maybe something like the Darkfire Shortbow if you want haste early. But that I kind of wanted to show it off here. But that's just what I wanted to do. It's entirely up to you. Uh, so, yeah, that is the build. Overall, I think this is thematically and mechanically one of the most fun builds I've ever made. It's so nice to just have a build that is straight up powerful, like we're mixing two really powerful Charisma Casters here to an extremely interesting effect, and you'll see from the combat footage here that this build looks and feels awesome to play. Uh, you're going to get a ton of value out of this build, you're going to get a ton of blaster damage, you're going to get a ton of melee damage, you're going to swap between the two on the fly, use your blade flourishes for interesting maneuvers and such, uh, swap to, like, like being able to push your enemy away with mobile flourish, and then blast them with a lightning bolt afterwards, or something like that. You have a ton of options for how you want to go about combat with this build, and it will work really, really well as part of a team. So, yeah, I absolutely recommend trying this one out. Uh, as for the end of video kind of updates and such, uh, obviously earlier today, as of this recording, I posted my 3,000 subscriber video where I detailed how the channel is going to be changing going forward, and you guys have been so, so supportive of that, and I really, really appreciate it. I cannot thank you enough uh, for continuing to support me like this, and, I, and for those of you who didn't see that video, I basically just said that my daily upload schedule is now going to be Monday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, with live streams on Sundays, and that does mean that I can officially announce now that our first live stream is going to be this Sunday, so as of recording, uh, that would be a week from now, and it is going to be our first modded run on uh, honor mode, meaning that we're going to be using 5e spells, uh, custom races, custom classes, and subclasses, the works, we're going to have fun with it, uh, and it's going to be a more casual stream where I could just chat with you guys a bit while still checking out the game's new content, so I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys there, and I hope it goes well, because I didn't realize when I did my initial stream that I had my bitrate set too low, so it looked like shit the whole time, and I apologize, so I promise I'm going to have that fixed for the next stream to the best of my ability, I'll try and do some test stuff ahead of time. Uh, so yeah, and also I've got some other big projects going on in the background, I'm working on a big, big video that I'm really, really looking forward to showing you guys, so I hope to see you there as well. Alright, that is going to be all from me, I will leave you with the rest of the combat footage now as it should probably roll over, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.
Let's see. 